For decades, California has led the nation in our efforts to protect the rights of vulnerable workers. We made history by providing vital protections for farm workers. We made history uh, by being the first state in the country to ban smoking in the workplace. California leads the national effort to raise the minimum wage to a level that allows workers to provide for their families. This bill continues California's efforts to protect workers. More specifically, AB 2539 addresses workplace safety issues for fashion models. This bill does three things. First, AB 2539 makes it clear that the models are employees, not independent contractors. This gives fashion models all the protections available to workers in California. This includes workers' compensation, unemployment insurance, disability insurance, and protections against harassment and discrimination. Two, this bill requires the adoption of an occupational safety and health standard for models. AB 2539, uh, with this standard, will be adopted by the Occupational Safety and Health Standards Board in a very public process involving stakeholder meetings and consulting with experts. Third, AB 2539 also requires that all modeling agencies be licensed by the Labor Commissioner. This ensures that the agencies are properly licensed and that the fashion models receive the same protections as actors and other talent. With me today is a powerful group of people who have a powerful message. They are going to share their horrendous stories of what models must endure to meet the demands of the industry. They are going to talk about what an eating disorder looks like and what that disorder does to the human body and the human spirit. They're going to discuss the exploitation and abuse that fashion models are subject to and the need for worker protections. When I heard these stories, I was moved. There is no excuse for requiring a model to have a diet of only one rice cake per day as a prerequisite to getting a job. It is unconscionable to look the other way as models swallow cotton balls, balls soaked in orange juice to deal with hunger pains and the physical effects of starvation. It is unforgivable to require fashion models to go through hell in the hopes of having a successful career in modeling. A career, by the way, that pays an average of only $45,000 annually in the state of California. While many people see fashion models as glamorous celebrities, the reality is the majority of fashion models have second or third jobs to pay rent and put food on the table. Today is a day that I have been waiting for for a very long time. My negative experiences within the modeling industry have fueled my desire to make a difference so that others do not have to suffer like I did. I want to ask you all, how would you feel if you came to work today and were subjected to sexual harassment, rape, financial exploitation, and pressures to lose weight? That might sound ridiculous, but it's not. It's what happens within the modeling industry on a regular basis, and it happened to me. The modeling industry is poorly regulated. During my career, I encountered bullying from agents and other professionals, and there was a sexual harassment, rape, and I was exposed to enormous amounts of drugs and alcohol, had payments withheld beyond the legal periods or was never paid at all, and was pressured to lose so much weight that I eventually developed anorexia nervosa and had to exit the industry due to my illness in 2012. While these are all things that nobody should ever have to experience, they were a mere fraction of what I went through. The sexual harassments and pressures to lose weight were nearly daily occurrences, and there were no laws or protections in place to help me. Instead, I was seen as just another model because I was an independent contractor not an employee, and that nearly cost me my, my life. I do not think, however, that the modeling industry should be vilified, rather that it can benefit from restructuring in the ways of workplace protections and, and improved health standards. This is why Bill AB 2539 is critically needed. 40% of models are currently struggling with some sort of an eating disorder, and that's just the reported percentage. Then there is the unfortunate long list of models who have died from their eating disorders as anorexia nervosa has the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. For me, this issue is personal. When I started modeling at 14, 
I was unprepared for the adult pressures that I faced, like shoots with photographers who put me on the spot to take nude photos and castings that my then agency sent me on to meet with men who made sexual demands. To this day, there is no policy of informed consent for jobs involving nudity, and models are not protected under sexual harassment law. When I raised my concerns to the president of one modeling agency, he suggested that I was being uptight and didn't see the problem. With the majority of fashion models beginning their careers between ages 13 and 16, children who model are particularly susceptible to this kind of abuse. And yet, it wasn't until November of 2013 that underage models in New York State, which is the center of the fashion industry in the US, had any protections under the Department of Labor. The perception that modeling is lucrative is far from the reality for most working models, who often work for trade, meaning a tote bag or a tank top, and who incur numerous startup costs that can amount to tens of thousands of dollars of debt to their agencies. Even top modeling agencies sometimes hold on to their models' earnings and have been accused in a pending class action lawsuit of pocketing royalty payments. As so-called independent contractors, models lack minimum wage protection and modeling agencies don't always tell the models in advance how much or even whether they're supposed to be paid for a job. For many models, just getting paid can be a major issue. And I experienced this myself when an agency refused to pay me and I had to get a lawyer to help me recoup my earnings. Modeling is a winner-take-all market. Thousands enter the profession with dreams of becoming the next Giselle or Kate Moss, but very few actually make it. In what is ostensibly an unregulated industry, pressures to engage in risky behavior are all too real. And by risky behavior, I mean starvation dieting, forfeiting compulsory schooling, and giving in to sexual demands from powerful male agents and clients. For many young models working today, bowing to these pressures can feel less like a choice than a prerequisite for employment. As a former fashion model, Bill AB2539 hits close to home. Before I was even legally able to drive a car, I was placed on a very strict and adult diet in order to fit into small sample sizes. I lived a double life, one where I would plan my meals in advance before school while, at the same time, sitting in the lunchroom of my high school where my friends discussed the AP US history homework from the night before. This impossible to maintain diet continued when I worked in Tokyo, Japan at 16. There, my only fuel for upwards of a 22-hour day was a hard-boiled egg and plain yogurt. It was impossible to maintain this diet, but my agency continued to place pressure on me to maintain my slim physique. Eventually, though, my body gave in. One day in particular, after sleeping for only three hours, I fainted on set. My body had had enough. My agency pushed back when I asked to go to a doctor. They said I had castings to attend. Luckily, though, my mother was there to advocate for my health. However, most models aren't that lucky. Models need these basic working protections and health regulations in order to ensure that they have the same support that other workers in any industry receive. Bill AB2539 would give models that support and those ne necessary protections. The other part of this public conversation is the effect of media on children and young people. The statistics are staggering. The National Association of Anorexia Nervosa and Eating Disorders and, and Associated Disorders reports the following data on the effect of the media and model images on young people. 47% of girls in 5th to 12th grade reported wanting to lose weight because of magazine pictures. 69% of girls in 5th to 12th grade re reported that magazine pictures influenced their idea of a perfect body shape. 42% of 1st to 3rd grade girls want to be thinner. 81% of 10-year-old girls and boys are afraid of being fat. There is no doubt when the industry forces models to be unhealthy, the societal effects are felt 
well beyond the runway and beyond the photo shoot. 